So before on the show, I've talked about how there absolutely is a right-wing victim complex. They love to portray themselves as the victims, even when it's completely inappropriate to do so. But there's a reason for this. Sure, it suits their political narrative, but they do this because this opens the door to their grift. We're going to talk about a grift that Donald Trump is doing by explicitly portraying himself as the victim after his FBI raid. But think about this in broader terms. So whenever some right-wing commentator on YouTube gets banned for a week or demonetized, what do they do? They say, this is an attack on free speech. Donate to help me fight back. Like it's all part of their way to make money and milk their supporters. But Trump is the highest example of that. So what he did after he was raided by the FBI at Mar-a-Lago was milk his supporters for millions and millions of dollars and he used this playbook before but it worked once again flawlessly so as josh dossi and isaac armsdorf of the washington post report former president donald trump bombarded his supporters with more than 100 emails asking for money based on the fbi search of the mar-a-lago club for classified materials last week they paid off contributions to trump's political action committee topped one million dollars on at least two days after the august 8th search of his palm beach florida estate according to two people familiar with the figures. The daily hauls jumped from a level of 200,000 to 300,000 that had been typical in recent months, according to the people who spoke on the condition of anonymity to discuss non-public information. The donations stayed unusually high for several more days and are still above average. Both of these people said, though they have leveled off in recent days, there are more contributors than usual, these people said, and the average donation has climbed. So even though he did something bad by refusing to give back classified documents, refusing to comply with subpoenas, he still found a way to portray himself as the victim. But for people to buy into this victimization narrative, he has to prove that this isn't just about him, it's about us, and perhaps it's an attack on them as well. So let's get to some of these emails, because they are so brazen. I can't believe that anyone falls for this. But one says here, The lawlessness, political persecution, and witch hunt must be exposed and stopped. Please, Russia donation immediately to publicly stand with me against this never-ending witch hunt. Another one says here, Friend, what recently took place at my Mar-a-Lago home was an unprecedented infringement on the rights of every American citizen. So understand, this is an infringement of not just his rights, but your rights as well. Really interesting how he did that little bit of a switcheroo here, if you will. Another one says, but they will never win, not as long as I have you on my team. Donate now to Trump's official defense fund. So, you know, them contributing is crucial to Trump being successful. Yes, the individual reading that email. Final one I've got for you here. This is political targeting at the highest level. Please contribute $5 or more right now to bolster our official Trump defense fund and get on the donor list. So by reading some of these emails, some of the 100 that he sent, he makes it seem as if this is bigger than just $5. They're part of a movement. They're part of the movement to save Donald Trump and by extension, save the country. And this, you know, is about them as well. Trump had his Mar-a-Lago estate raided. So perhaps one day they'll have their literal resort raided. I mean, like, they're not thinking this through, obviously. But the problem is that, sure, you're getting scammed here, okay? Sometimes it happens to people, but this isn't the first time that Trump has milked his supporters. So during the 2020 election, when he was claiming fraud, he milked his supporters again, but much, much more. And even after he could no longer legally challenge the actual election because he exhausted all of his legal options and lost over 60 cases in court, he was, he was still saying donate to our defense fund. And Trump's people was forced to admit that, yeah, there was really never a legal defense fund. It was just marketing. In other words, it was a scam. They were scamming people. And this was all revealed at the January 6th public committees. Take a look. We'll watch a really quick segment of them explaining the way that he scammed his supporters with lies. Between election day and January 6th, the Trump campaign sent millions of fundraising emails to Trump supporters, sometimes as many as 25 a day. The emails claimed the, quote, left-wing mob was undermining the election, implored supporters to, quote, step up to protect the integrity of the election, and encouraged them to, quote, fight back. But as the select committee has demonstrated, the Trump campaign knew these claims of voter fraud were false, yet they continued to barrage small dollar donors with emails, encouraging them to donate to something called the Official Election Defense Fund. The select committee discovered no such fund existed. I don't believe there is actually a fund called the Election Defense Fund. 
Different say the election defense fund was another, as I think we called it a marketing tactic. Yes. And tell us about these funds as marketing tactics. Uh, just the topic matter, uh, where money could potentially go to be, how money could potentially be used. The claims that the election was stolen were so successful. President Trump and his allies raised $250 million, nearly $100 million in the first week after the election. On November 9th, 2020, President Trump created a separate entity called the Save America PAC. Most of the money raised went to this newly created PAC, not to election-related litigation. The Select Committee discovered that the Save America PAC made millions of dollars of contributions to pro-Trump organizations, including $1 million to Trump Chief of Staff Mark Meadows' Charitable Foundation, $1 million to the America First Policy Institute, a conservative organization which employs several former Trump administration officials, $204,857 to the Trump Hotel Collection, and over $5 million to Event Strategies, Inc., the company that ran President Trump's January 6th rally on the ellipse. All of us here today do not want to see our election victory stolen by emboldened radical left Democrats, which is what they're doing. The evidence developed by the Select Committee highlights how the Trump campaign aggressively pushed false election claims to fundraise, telling supporters it would be used to fight voter fraud that did not exist. So you're probably thinking, why would these people, after getting ripped off by him and learning that he never had a legal defense fund, it was just all going to his organizations and, and whatnot, why would they donate again now with the FBI search? Because perhaps this won't go towards that as well. Well, the answer to that question is they probably didn't watch the January 6th committee. And in the event they saw any of the committee hearings, do you think they're going to believe that? Because, again, this is bigger than Donald Trump. This is this coordinated effort by the deep state and the establishment. Not that Trump isn't part of the establishment. He totally is. But this is a coordinated effort by elites, excluding Trump, to bring him down and, by extension, bring all of them down and, you know, on one hand, I do feel bad that these folks are getting scammed multiple times by Donald Trump. But on another hand, I mean, if you haven't learned your lesson, my sympathy is drying up for you. I mean, it's it's like there's a saying for this, right? Maybe a different former president and war criminal can uh, help jog my memory. There's an old saying in Tennessee. I know it's in Texas, probably in Tennessee, that says, fool me once. Shame on. Shame on you. Fool me, we can't get fooled again. A classic, an absolute classic. Now, the thing about Donald Trump is, it's not like these scams that he's conducted while he was in a position of power and is currently an ex-president seeking a second term. Um, it's not like this is a new phenomenon. Before he was elected to office, he paid a $25 million settlement to attendees of his fake college, Trump University. And he defrauded these individuals and tried to upsell even more services to them once they already were attending his so-called university. And as I talk about this scam, we learned just today, as Common Dreams reports, former Trump Organization Chief Financial Officer Alan Weiselberg on Thursday pleaded guilty to 15 felonies related to tax fraud in New York State Court and is set to serve only five months in jail on Rikers Island if he testifies during the trial of the ex-president's family business. Today, Alan Weiselberg admitted in court that he used his position at the Trump Organization to bilk taxpayers and enrich himself, said Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg in a statement. Instead of paying his fair share like everyone else, Weiselberg had the Trump Organization provide him with a rent-free apartment, expensive cars, private school tuition for his grandchildren, and new furniture, all without paying required taxes. This plea agreement directly implicates the Trump Organization in a wide range of criminal activities activity and requires Weiselberg to provide invaluable testimony in the upcoming trial against the corporation, Bragg continued. So everyone in Trump's orbit is a fraud and Trump is a serial scam artist and he used his presidency to elevate his fraud and his scams to unprecedented new levels. And regardless of how many times, you know, his supporters may or may not learn that there's really no defense fund for him it works because it's marketing. This is about money making. So Trump doesn't care about his supporters. This is all about milking them dry, but they don't care because they genuinely believe that he's fighting for him. And while he was president, he delivered for them. Even if he literally was pretty brazen about just doing the bidding of elites, he cut taxes for himself and his rich buddies. But yet, 
you know, when you're in this cult of personality, you don't necessarily let facts penetrate that bubble. So, so long as this cult of personality exists and Trump can, he will continue to rip off and scam his supporters. But I mean, if they're going to continue to fall for it, I have no sympathy for them. Do better. Stop being so fucking gullible, maybe. I don't know. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.